Uh, I'm talking with, uh, with Governor Ronald Reagan. Would you care to speculate as to whether um, Mr. Agnew will be on the ticket again this year? Well, I, I think he will. You do? Yes. Yeah. And of course, uh, when I was a sports announcer, I also said that Max Bear would lick Joe Lewis. <laughs> so we can take that with, uh, yeah. with a bag of salt, can we? Or, uh... yeah. No, I, I, really, I really do. I, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of speculation. I, mm. And it will be down to the, to the, to the moment, but I, I think the team will stick together. Can you picture a conservative candidate running against President Nixon? There are so many disaffected conservatives now over the UN and, and China and so on. Well, I know. Uh, I disagree with, uh, with a great many of them. I think that uh, no one is ever going to do that job to suit everyone. But mm -hmm. uh, I, can't, I can't see a, a really serious bit. I can see some um, gestures, some symbolic things, and such as entering a primary in New Hampshire or something, and, and almost with the idea of influencing him, uh, the president, mm -hmm. uh, to change his course. But uh, I don't see anything wrong with the trip he's taken to Peking. I, I can understand some people being uncomfortable about it, but uh, the president has said he wants to go. He hopes that perhaps by at least sitting and talking, he can remove us a step further from war. Yeah. And he, is, uh, he hasn't said he's going to give anything away or trade us down the river. He has uh, made it plain that he intends to keep our alliances with all the other Asian nations, including the government of Chiang Kai-shek, and mm -hmm. I don't see why anyone should be so disturbed. Would you say it's conceivable that events could change to the point where you might be approached, uh, or have been approached, maybe, uh, to run against him? Well, um, no, it isn't conceivable. I, I have pledged my support and uh, yeah. going to go forward on that basis. Mm -hmm. Even if they threatened to release that movie that you were talking about? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> oh, oh Governor Reagan, I must ask you this. I, Tell me that you didn't say that thing about the redwoods some years ago, um, that when you've no. seen one redwood, you've seen them no. all. No, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I'd like to match our environmental record here in California against that of most uh, governments, including the federal government. But no, that was during the campaign, mm -hmm. and my opponent said that I said that. Uh. And uh, that was the hardest thing to bear because it was uh, <clears throat> contrary to everything I feel. I been an outdoorsman and we've, I've had a farm or a ranch for a number of years and I wouldn't even cut down a tree on my own ranch. I couldn't imagine that. If any, I, I've seen the redwoods and people who haven't can't, but it's almost a religious experience to see them. It's just an incredible the, thing. The tragedy, Dick, is that so many people in the country still think that there is a great threat to the redwoods and it doesn't uh, do the people of California justice because probably one of the great conservation successes in the whole world has been the work of the people of California to save the redwoods. There are almost 200,000 acres, well, mm -hmm. maybe closer to 150,000 acres of the, what are called the great cathedral-like groves of ancient mm -hmm. trees. And there, are, there can't be more than four or 5,000 acres of that kind of tree left in private hands. They are mm -hmm. all that many in our parks now. Would you be for putting even more in so that we're just? Well, uh, beyond no, that. No chance. That well, here's the greatest proof I can give you. When the federal government finally agreed to have a national redwood park, mm -hmm. they bought about 28,000 acres between two of our state parks. Mm -hmm. Now, the 20, 28,000 acres they have could not possibly make a park. The only way it can make a park, it is a mm -hmm. kind of a bridge between two of our state parks, and if you join these two beautiful state parks to this 28,000 acre connecting piece, mm -hmm. you will have a good national park, and this is the plan that is, that like is being that. worked out now. Yes, yeah. we've been working with a commission with the federal mm -hmm. government for quite some time on that to do that. But we have saved the redwoods. Now, the, the redwoods that are being lumbered are commercial trees. The redwood grows very fast. It mm -hmm. may grow very old, but it grows very fast. And most of our lumbering in California is approaching what is known as sustained yield, meaning that they won't cut any faster than the redwoods grow back. In 40 years, a redwood forest totally cut down has reached the height at which you can once again go in and, and lumber it. But don't the conservationists feel in the Sierra Club that, that still is not enough, that there's still a threat to That's the... Right. Uh... Their, their complaint is one in which now they have to admit that there are no more great groves to be saved. Mm -hmm. So now they have embarked on saying, but we need a shield around them. So we want you to take mm -hmm. just some of this ordinary 
uh, forest land around the present redwood parks and get more of that to surround them. Mm -hmm. And there is a certain screening that is, is done now. But the people of California have done this. A great many of those 150,000 acres were purchased by the people of California and given to the state uh, so that the trees would be preserved. Do you belong to any of those uh, conservation groups? Well, the other day the Sierra Club asked me to join and I said I'd be delighted. Yeah. And uh, I waited for the high-rise buildings in San Francisco to fall down. They didn't. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. um, no, I've always been uh, yeah. in that. And as a matter of fact, uh, we instituted long before Everybody discovered ecology, and long before some of our young people, I'm glad to say, got so carried away, mm. uh, from the first day our administration started in 67, we instituted plans whereby we said that we would no longer have highways go with a straight line if it meant tearing up ecology or going through some historic area or something, that they were going to have to respect those. We have since won a great many national awards mm. for uh, our preservation of the scenery in doing that. We have voluntarily agreed that hereafter all rights of ways will have to be cleared by a joint committee of our parks and recreation people, mm -hmm. as uh, well as the local people and the Highway Commission, uh, to make sure that the beauty is preserved. Uh, Sounds good. We're out ahead, yeah. I think, of most of the country in this. I know you have to leave. I just have to ask one question because this recent thing that came up. Is it possible in high political office like your own governor of state to go broke? Can a man personally go broke while in high office like that? Well, uh, I've often wondered I if... I don't know just how you, how you mean that or what, uh, what you mean. Do you... No, I just meant... I suppose it, if he had anything other than his salary, mm -hmm. he, could, um, he could lose that the same as anyone else could lose it by business reverses. As yeah. to your income, I, I can say this. It's very easy uh, to find that the demands of the position uh, exceed uh, what you get. That's what I wondered, if you could outlay, lay out more money and if, if your finances all went, your investments all went badly, uh, an ex-governor could conceivably be... Oh, yes. Because I won't say on welfare, but oh, um, the, on something. Yeah. The, the no, in, the, in the first place, you, 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 maintain, uh, you maintain two homes. Yeah. You, you have to live in a capital, but you know you're not going to be there forever, and so you try to keep your home where it is. and. Uh, Maybe this is one of the reasons why I've been so interested in trying to get property tax reform out here. Uh, when, I, when I pay the taxes <laughs> for those weekends, it's getting like a yacht where you, you know, if you have to ask how much it costs, you can't afford it. I see. But um, no, this, you maintain two households and uh, there are just things expected of you and that you do and um, there's no provision for them. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Well, it's a great pleasure. Say hello to Mrs. Fragner. I certainly will. She's okay. spoken very often of how much she enjoyed being here on the show, and we're glad to have you here in California. Uh, Even if it's my last day. Yeah, it's it's been very pleasant. Thank you very much, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Still there. Booing is a bit tacky, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs>